So welcome to our spoilers review of the new Nightfell novel, It Devours. This is one of the books that we were so excited to get our hands on this year. We love everything Nightfell. We've been to their live shows, we've been listening to the podcast forever, we read the first one, so getting our hands on the second one is just like, yes, thank you. I mean, the second one follows a different aspect of Night Vale. We're gonna be focusing more on Carlos, even though Carlos isn't the main character, but we get to see him through someone else's eyes, which is nice because the only time we ever see Carlos is through Cecil. And it's about just how perfect he is and his perfect hair and his perfect teeth and how good he is at the science and how Cecil doesn't really understand the science, but he's so good at it and he loves him anyway and their relationship makes me want to throw up. But <laughs> in a good way, I love them. They're so cute. I'm so far behind on the podcast, but it's been spoiled for me that they got married by this book, but I'm so excited for them. Congratulations. <laughs> There's my Cecil Carlos friend. So this book follows a new character in Name's Nilanjana Sikdar, and she is a scientist who works with Carlos. Now, she doesn't do prize winning work like yell at potatoes. Or but making a machine that like lets out a large bang and then a flash of light when it's supposed to do the light and then the bang. But she does do work like make safe pesticides and you know, stuff that's useful to the world. She is from outside of Night Vale, so she is an interloper and she does not really feel welcome in the town. Like she's been there for three or four years, but people still scream interloper at her. By now she's, she feels like she should be a part of the town, but it's because most people say that she hasn't like accepted the town yet. She hasn't like really like made her place in it. Cause I mean, Night Vale is weird. She hasn't really made any human human connections with yeah. anyone. The only people she talks to are the, her fellow scientists. So she's still kind of an interloper and she definitely feels like an interloper. But, you know, she's friends with Carlos and Carlos has been looking into the house that doesn't exist. And he's been using a like science beam to kind of look at it. He's trying to figure out what the connection is with the other world and, you know, stuff about it he doesn't really know but he's still clearly like messed up from his time where he was stuck on the other side you find out that even though he was there for a year for carlos it felt like he was there for 10 years the way he talks about it is kind of horrifying where like he was there he wasn't hungry he wasn't thirsty he wasn't tired he was just kind of in this stasis of nothingness and that he experienced nothingness and like he, can't, he doesn't want to tell cecil because cecil's already heard enough that they were separated for a year the idea that it felt longer for him. He's trying to protect him from that. So he definitely has this like obsession with figuring out the desert underworld, uh, other world and just like will not let it go. At the same time, there are these earthquakes going on and Carlos is like, sure that the earthquakes are connected to the desert other world but he doesn't know what's causing them buildings and places are just like disappearing into holes into the ground so we lose like big rico's pizza and a whole bunch of other places and like people are just disappearing as well so he's like listen city council has warned me to stop looking into this uh can you look into it for me nils and her investigation kind of brings her to the congregation of the joys the joyous, joyous congregation, congregation of, of the smiling god. god. When this was first introduced in the podcast way, way, way back, it was like the first time that Night Vale ever made me uncomfortable. <laughs> because like, okay, so there are creepy aspects to the podcast, but it's kind of like, oh, haha, ha, it's kind of funny, because... Because then meat crowns. <laughs> and, then, and then you get Sandstorm Part B, I think is what it was, when you meet <laughs> Kevin for the first time. Fuck. <laughs> that is a voice that haunts my nightmare. And just like, he's, Kevin Arfrey is a lovely looking man and he just seems so friendly and kind, but if I hear him reading an audiobook, I'm just like, I don't think I can do this because I'm scared. <laughs> we go to the Night Vale live shows and I'm like, I really hope Kevin doesn't show up. <laughs> <laughs> Screams and runs <laughs> down the aisle like, ah! <laughs> like he's really creepy. He's so creepy and the whole like concept of the joyous congregation of the smiling God was so creepy and so well done and just like a religion that Kevin founded just like sets my teeth on edge. <laughs> <laughs> so when I found out this book was going to be dealing with like the joyous congregation of the smiling God which is more fun to say the more I say it. I got excited and kind of terrified and what surprised me the most was just how straight they played it with how it felt very much like a church. <laughs> like you start getting into the weird rituals and stuff, but it's at that point, that's kind of seen as like an aspect of the religion that nobody like 
does not speak for the whole religion. Mm -hmm. I see what you're doing there, Joseph yeah. Fink yeah. and Jeffrey Crater. But I mean, like, the congregation has that creepy fox Yeah, the, the fox... Yeah, that was weird and fox-themed windows. I think windows. what creeped me out the most in this book were the pamphlets. <laughs> like, because <laughs> you actually get like illustrations. You got it. illustrations in like th there was that one point. I think the one there's um like a hand that's like dripping upwards or whatever. <laughs> I'm just like, nope, <laughs> I'm out. <laughs> the beginning of the book, it's kind of play that you know, like science is the right. And religion is the silly. As the book goes along, you kind of find like the common ground, and they're both right, and they both have their their merits. Their merits, and you need to, as a person, you need to be able to use them. Yeah. Which, right on. Nils kind of has like a crush on a guy who is from the joyous congregation of the smiling god. His name's Daryl, um, and Daryl just like loves a religion. He was like raised in it, and he wants to like spread it to everyone so they can be happy and find the joy that he's found in the religion too. She's very sciencey, so they're never gonna like convince each other of the, uh, like convert each other to the cause of the other. The most they can do is like find common ground, but they do like each other. So they have this like relationship that's like playing out between them as you've got this larger thing going on it's in the very town. very realistic. Yeah. This book fucked me up. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, what we find out is that Nils decides from all the evidence that she's collected that this thing, these earthquakes, are being caused by the joyous congregation of the smiling god. They are summoning their god. And she confronts the pastor on this. The pastor's like, no, yeah, the smiling god is gonna come and it's gonna devour us all and it's gonna devour us in. And Daryl's like, but isn't that like a metaphor? <laughs> She's like, no, like we're, we're summoning the smiling god and the smiling god is gonna eat all of Nightville. And it's gonna be great. <laughs> and it's gonna be great. And so it's just like, oh crap. And so they have to work together to like keep the congregation from summoning their smiling god because it turns out that their smiling god is like in the desert other world and it's a giant freaking centipede. They end up stealing the book, the ritual book to do and they do it themselves and they summon the smiling god and they fight it and it ends up with them like <laughs> the helicopters coming and trapping it. All the scientists use their science things like the scientist who's like Yelling at, yelling at potatoes, so it's a potato, and the, si the other scientist who's making the big machine uses his machine as a distraction. So then Nils uses her pesticide to kill it, and everybody's like, yay, we, de we defeated it! And they found out that everyone who had been eaten by the smiling god ended up in the desert underworld, and they're all coming back because they found a way out through the house, and everyone's super duper excited, and everything's all tied up with bow, and Daryl and Nils are together, and everyone's happy. And then the day after happens with Carlos. <laughs> so Carlos is like, we still need to figure out what's going on with the house. And it turns out that the science he's been doing on the house has actually been the thing that's causing the earthquakes. And that's been the problem. He has to like let go of his obsession with protecting people from the desert other world because that is actually what's destroying Night Vale versus like the actual desert other world. So science and religion aren't the problems, it's how people use them. <laughs> that was like, I felt bad for the centipede. I did too! I was just <laughs> like, they killed it. And then they like just kind of brush it off, like we killed this innocent creature. Yeah, yeah because people. Because they thought the centipede was causing the earthquakes, yeah. but it wasn't, so they could have just like left it alone and it would have been fine doing that its thing. That was like the first moment when you just kind of like, maybe there's something up with Carlos, because Carlos is like, no, we have to kill it. Like, we can't leave it. We have to kill it. And they're like, and I'm like, oh, do we have to? And then they kill it, and it's, like, somewhat sad. And I mean, okay, so you feel good after that, because everything's all tied together in a perfect bow, and everything's great. And then it just, the book smacks you with the next step along, just to, like... <laughs> Where it's like, turns out it wasn't actually the centipede. The centipede was innocent. And you're like, oh, shit. And then it's just, like, the next thing is the whole, um, the relationship. Yeah. Which just like... I really like that. I really liked it, but it still messed me up. <laughs> oh, really? Because I'm just like, I was like... You come out of the book book part being like, okay, you know, I see what they're doing. Like, I see their thesis and they played it out well and I liked 
everything and I liked the invisible pizza and I liked the twist and I liked their relationship because it felt like a natural relationship. Mm -hmm. Like, it, it felt real. At the end, it's just like, but it didn't work. Because, you know, Daryl kind of has like a breakup with his religion in a way and he's like, you know, I can't go back there. I can't like worship this thing that turned out to be like a lie and the people were lying to me. But then as like time goes by, he kind of like reintegrates with the religion and he's like, you know what? I didn't like that aspect of it, that part was bullshit, but it doesn't mean the core values of it were bullshit. So they kind of end up having to go their separate ways because she's still very sciencey and he's still very into his religion. And they break up. Yeah. And I don't know, there's this one kind of line that stuck with me where, you know, they're like lying in bed, they're just like, they're naked and then they realize that they need to break up and then like all of a sudden they're like, I need to cover my nakedness because this is really awkward because First I was in bed with somebody I was in a relationship with, and now, or not, <laughs> it's super awkward right now. Yeah. Like, I, was just like, I really <laughs> liked it, but it still like kind of ripped my heart out <laughs> and like presented it to me because it felt real and it felt like something that I have seen happen in my life, which yeah. like, great that that's in a book in fiction and it's very like healthy to show like, because you went through this crazy thing together, now you're gonna be together forever, you no. know? This reality still sits in. But reality can still be sad. Like, it's still sad. You still feel sad that this relationship kind of fell apart, but you do see the hope at the end because Daryl was seeing Stephanie from the church, who he kind of was clearly had a thing for throughout the book that he didn't realize he had. And Nils is like, oh, like, happy with her life. She's and, like, I've made some connections. Yeah. I feel like nobody shows interloper at me anymore. And yeah, I might like, go we've watched them else. grow. They've watched them grow as people. Mm -hmm. And like, now they're going off to like, yeah, continue. they're still it's, friends, but it's good. Yeah. I love it. Mm -hmm. I really liked this book a lot. Yeah, I did too. And there have like, there's like a whole like separate epilogue too, where it's just like, kind of like summing up everything that's happened in a weird kind of like author heavy-handed kind of way and I really like that too. Probably the only problem with this book is that if you don't really know Night Vale, yeah. you're not gonna really appreciate, appreciate it. it. With the last Night Vale book they said, oh yeah, you know, this is a good jumping off point and I felt, uh, it's still not really, but this is more so ingrained into the world of Night Vale so I'd recommend like listening to a bit of the podcast. Yeah. If you haven't, if like you love Night Vale, do it. Like read it. It's great. Like mm -hmm. for sure. But yeah, I wouldn't like hand it to somebody who's never read Night Vale and be like, you'll love it. So yeah, super glad we read this book. You should too. And um, tell us what you thought about it, guys. What were your favorite parts? What creeped you out? <laughs> and uh, yeah, I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.